Guys, this is the Delta Wolf Barong series. I just finished sharpening it, and I did it at request of Dahlstrong. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take a look at how I got this knife that sharp. All right, guys, like I said in the intro, we are going to sharpen this Dahlstrong Delta Wolf Barong recurve kitchen knife. Now, what a recurve is, is it's just a knife that kind of sweeps down and has a low area. They can be really useful for a lot of things, but they can be problematic to sharpen. So before we even start, I'm going to show you a couple of tips on how to prevent having to sharpen this knife. So basically, you have that edge. If you have a ceramic rod like this, you can very easily set your ceramic rod up and you can touch this edge up after use. And I, I personally like to do it this way. I feel like I have more control of it. Everybody's like, oh, I think you're gonna cut yourself. If I come down, I'm gonna hit the handle, not my hand. So you can touch this up with this mild abrasive. This is about a 3000 grit edge or about a 3000 grit um, abrasive on this ceramic rod. So you're actually removing just a tiny amount of material at the very edge, very, very fine and you are absolutely touching that edge back up and bringing it up. There's another way to do it that actually is a less abrasive, removes less material, and it's a strop. Now this one's been loaded with, oh, where'd I put it? Um, gunny juice. This is a one micron diamond emulsion. You simply add this liquid to your strop, you spread it around, you let it dry, and it gives you a very, very fine, abrasive surface that you can use to touch your edge up. And they come in really handy to clean up the edge. If you don't have a ceramic rod on something like this, you want something rounded because you want something that's gonna get up in this edge. So that out of the way, those are ways you can maintain it. And with a ceramic rod and a strop, you can maintain the edge on a knife if you're faithful about every time you get done using it, you just touch it up real quick on a ceramic rod. Don't use the steel that comes with your kitchen sets. Those are horrible for your edges. But if you are faithful about keeping up, maintaining that edge just like that, or like I said, on the counter, I've got two different angles going so you'll be able to see that. You'll be able to maintain that and keep it sharp for a very long time. So now let's get into the difficulties of actually sharpening this barong or any recurve knife for that matter. What the problem is that recurve is a gap here. Now, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it. I'll try to get it in so that you guys can see it. But when you bring this knife and you put it on the stone, here, I'll bring it over to this one, to this camera. When you put it on the stone, if you get up, and let me get behind the camera, when you put it on the stone, you can see that there's a gap right there. See that gap between the stone and the knife? Well, the problem with that is, that what's going to happen is you're only going to remove material here and here, and you're not going to fully clean up that edge. So you'll wind up with a flat spot here, a flat spot here, and then this will just basically turn into a, a straight edge here with a curved front. And that's not what you want. You want to actually just completely sharpen that knife. So we're going to have to use some specialized tools. Now, I have some one inch stones that we could use and I have some half inch stones that we are going to use. And it's just because it's more efficient and it covers that, that area in there. So what you can do is if you had nothing else, you could use the corner of your stone. But the problem with that is these stones do wear down and what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a, an area here where it's all what we call dished out, like a bowl. It's bowled out, dished out, and it's just going to remove material there, and then you're gonna have an area that knife of that nice, beautiful flat stone that Dahlstrong sent me that is just kind of ruined. So, plus on top of that, the edges don't give you a real clean trash truck. A real clean trash. There's trash truck outside. They don't give you a real clean edge. It's going to be much more uh, aggressive on that. You're not gonna get the benefits of the stone. So, with that being said. These stones are designed to be used with a fixtured system. What a fixtured system is, it's, it's, a machine, it's like a machine that you run by hand. It doesn't have a motor, but it's, it's like a, a plate that you set the angle and then you move the stones in on it. I don't like fixtured, fixtured systems. I much prefer to do things freehand. So I use the stones, 
but I don't use the machine. And these just base or the, the fixture. They clamp in and then you would basically move this along the knife. They are very good. There's several I would recommend. The TS Prof, um, the Edge Pro has one that uses these type of stones. And um, also um, WorkSharp has one that uses, these are actually the Edge Pro stones. So there's that out of the way. So the way I'm about to sharpen this is a freehand sharpening. Now this is an advanced kind of thing. I am a professional sharper. I've sharpened knives for knife makers. I've sharpened knives for knife companies. I've sharpened knives for customers uh, across the world. So this is a way that I do it and you probably aren't going to want to try to duplicate what I do for safety, um, but I'm going to show you the steps that you could, I mean, the steps are going to be the same regardless of how I do it. You're just going to get to see how I do it freehand. The steps of this would be the same if you're using a fixtured system with these stones. So let's get these stones back in the water. Now this knife is in 9CR18 MOV, which is a fairly stainless steel. Even though it's listed as high carbon, it's still fairly stainless. So I don't need to put any baking soda in my water, which is a good thing because baking soda makes it slick. And the way I'm about to start sharpening, we don't want that. But one of the first things you want to do is figure out where you put your rag. Uh, and then you want to make sure your blade is good and dry. And I'm going to show you a technique for making sure that you have completely apexed the edge, which means that you have a scratch pattern that goes all the way from the origin of the ground, of the or of your uh, bevel all the way to the apex, which is the very, very edge. It's really simple. You're gonna take a black magic marker or a red magic marker or a blue magic marker. The color really doesn't matter, but it just needs to be something that you can see clearly. And you're gonna take the tip of that, you can take the tip of that marker and you're gonna put it on the edge and you're gonna run it all the way down and just leave some magic marker at the apex. And you can see we've got a black line running all the way the length of that from heel to tip. And we're gonna be able to see if we've removed the material at the edge. Now I am going to do a bias on that knife. I'll explain it on this knife. I'll explain it later, but I'm going to do something a little bit different because this is going to go to someone for some testing. So give me a second and I'm gonna get everything set up and I'll walk you through the steps of sharpening this knife. Okay, a quick note about abrasives. The abrasives are there to do the work for you. I will, I've seen too many people just bearing down and pushing when they're sharpening. And it's one of the worst things you can do to, regardless of the stone, whether it's aluminum oxide or diamond, all you're doing is you're causing a little bit of advanced wear on your stones that you don't need to. So let the abrasive do its work. So the way I'm going to do this, and like I said, I absolutely have taught myself this method over years and, and, and things like that. It's not the method most people would do. Um, a lot of people will say it's not safe. I'm gonna take my wedding ring off so that I have a more flat platform. I'm gonna take the stone, I'm gonna put it in my hand here. I'm gonna put it between my index finger and the, and the meaty part of my hand here. And I'm simply going to take this knife and I'm going to start running this knife down the stone and I'm gonna see where I'm at on my angle. Just a couple light passes. I wanna see where my angle's at. And as you can see, I removed the black magic marker from the apex, except at the very tip, which probably is because I was being very conservative, very light, and I didn't go all the way down. So let's see. As you can see, we've removed the black ceramic pretty much all the way down. So other side, I wanna make sure that I feel my angle out and I'm gonna do a pass and I'll bring it back and maybe I'll do one more pass. And then I'm gonna look and I've removed the black magic marker all the way down, except for a couple of spots, because like I said, conservative passes. So we, this is a 220 grit stone. I am going to then begin to remove material ever so lightly. Like I said, I'm not pushing, so there's not much chance that I'm going to stab myself in the hand because I'm using the stones properly and I'm not putting any weight on it. Now I'm going to do some small little passes like this just to even everything out. And when I feel and hear that I've removed the scratch pattern from the previous sharpening, which was the factory edge, which is going to be right about 220. You can hear some coarse areas and things like that. Once that sounds more consistent and even and clean, I'm gonna do some longer sweeping passes.
And I'm concentrating on listening, so that's why I'm not talking as much. Now these passes I'm doing are to even out the edge completely to make sure that I've got a nice, clean, smooth transition on my micro serrations. So the micro serrations are the little scratch pattern, the scratch marks that the stones are leaving in the steel as they cut it. Those are what I actually are doing your cutting. People think like, oh, the finer the edge, the sharper the knife. No, this knife probably right now, if I was to strop and make sure I didn't have a burr, would be just about shaving sharp um, because I've apexed that on both sides. Now, I'm going to continue to remove some material back and forth to make sure I've removed any fatigued material, material that might have gotten heated in the factory sharpening, sharpening process because it's done on a belt grinder, which can have a tendency to overheat the edge. So I'm just going to make a few more passes and then I'm going to feel for a burr and then I'm going to pass that burr from side to side a few times. This is just the initial sharpening. And like I said, I am putting zero pressure on this. And I'm gonna be able to hear, well, if I keep my stone in the right place, I'm gonna be able to hear little areas that might need some extra attention by the way it sounds on the stone. So if you listen, I don't know how clear it's gonna be for you, but if you listen, I'm listening for inconsistencies in how that sounds coming off this, going down, up and down the stone. There's a little spot there. And now it sounds consistent. We should be just about good everywhere. So now we'll do some more long sleeping passes. And you wanna make sure you keep your stones wet. Just like with the Dahlstrung, big, the big Dahlstrung sharpening stones, these small ones, absolutely the same thing. You wanna make sure they stay wet so your abrasive stays lubricated and you don't have a buildup in your stone of steel that blocks the abrasive ability of the stone. You don't have this as much in these type of stones as you do in say like the diamond stones or diamond plates. And like I said, something like this is a challenge for a lot of people to sharpen. And I find them challenging, that's why I enjoy them. I enjoy the challenge of sharpening new things. You absolutely could send this back to Dahlstrong for sharpening. They have a sharpening service and I have yet to have a Dahlstrong knife that did not come very, very sharp. So, so talking about a burr. So when, you, when you're sharpening, you're gonna have that, that steel is going to roll up and come over from one side to the other. That is what's called your burr. And now I can feel that I have a burr on this knife, no burr, and then I can feel I have a burr here. What you wanna do is you wanna pass that burr, I call it passing the burr, it's, it's forming that burr on both sides several times. So now that burr's gone, I could tell by the way it sounds. And now that burr is gone. And I'm gonna do that a few times back and forth just to make sure that I've removed any fatigued or overheated material, like I said. And so you're gonna do that a few times. Your core stone is your base. If you try to start too fine, I've seen people like, I started a thousand grit. I, I don't necessarily think that's a good idea because one, you're spending money on stones that you shouldn't. You're wearing stones out prematurely. And two, if you don't build that toothy edge base like we have here, you're never gonna have a good final result. This knife right here would be perfect if you were say butchering and you wanted to just cut meat raw horsepower, this absolutely would get the job done because it's very toothy, which means that the, the saw teeth on that edge, the little micro serrations are large, which means it's gonna bite into the material and it is aggressive right now. But for a lot of things, that's not gonna be what you want. So what you absolutely can do is you go up and grit. So that's a 400, that's a 600, and that's a 1,000. I'm gonna get these back in the water uh, real quick, just for a second. And we're gonna switch to our 400 grit stone and we're gonna refine that edge. So refining the edge, you basically just take off the old scratch pattern. So give me a second. I'm gonna clean up some mess and then we'll come right back and I'll bring you back for round two, which is changing that scratch pattern a little bit and cleaning it up.
All right, so we are gonna move up our grip progression. We're gonna even this edge out. We are going to very lightly pass this across the stone. And all we're doing is just cleaning up that scratch pattern from the last stone. So that last stone was very coarse. We're gonna work our way up to a less coarse edge that's gonna be more utilitarian. We're probably gonna stop at about 600 grit. I don't think I'm gonna take this knife all the way to a thousand because I know who this is going to and I know what they're going to be doing with it as a field camp cooking knife. So they're gonna do some testing on this knife. So we're gonna feel for that burr. Nice and even and consistent. We're gonna go ahead and move to the other side. And on, uh, on these stones, they cut really well, a lot like the Dahlstrong stones. They're very aggressive aluminum oxide stones, and they definitely give you a good, good cut and, and uh, material removal. So you don't have to do as much. Now we are going to go back and forth a few times and make sure that we're forming a burr on both sides and make sure that we're cleaned up the burr on both sides. So I've got a burr the full length there. And we're just gonna do that back and forth. I call it passing the burr. And if you see there's some blood on my hands, I did not cut myself sharpening. I absolutely dropped a, a, a glass in the sink in between. I was talking to my wife on the phone and I dropped a glass in the sink and proceeded while trying to clean up glass out of my sink so it didn't get into the, gar so it didn't get in the garbage disposal. Cut myself with a piece of glass. At least it's in the sink, not on the floor. You know what I mean? So you can see that black residue that's on the stone. That is the material that we've removed from this knife. These stones, like I said, they cut really well. They're, they're about the same as the Dahlstrung stones in the way they cut. So. Feeling for the burr. And then, like I said, between stones and in between, like I, I know I can feel right here, I need to work more on the inside of that recurve. So I'm gonna wet my stone, I'm gonna get back down in the recurve here, and I can focus on that and then marry that all in. A little bit of cotton from the, see my hands are wetter than I want, that stone is slipping around a little bit. So I'm gonna clean up that area inside that recurve. I'm gonna do it on both sides. And then I'm gonna check that again because I should feel an even and consistent edge. And I do, I don't feel any rough areas. That's one way that you can definitely make sure that you have cleaned up that edge entirely. So. Feels good and clean to me. I formed a burr on both sides. We can absolutely move on to the next stone, which is 600. Like I said, I'm not going to take this all the way to 1,000. That's a little finer than I think this knife would be used. This is gonna be used for like field barbecue and butchery and things like that. And so this is going to want a little bit toothier of an edge. So 600 grit is a good place to stop. I don't like the way that edge feels on that. Okay, here's a little talking point. So when you start, if you feel a corner of your stone feels bad, um, grab another abrasive stone and clean your edges up. Because if you've got chips on the edges of these stones, like if you slammed into it with a knife, you are absolutely going to have problems with that because it's going, those chips are going to cut deep scratches in your blade. So one of those things that you wanna check, like that didn't sound right to me, didn't feel right to me, so we have definitely taking care of that problem. Let's see here. Yeah, that sounds way better. So, like I said, we are just gonna, let me make sure my hands are a little bit wetter than I want, stone's a little wetter than I want. I want it to stay as stable as possible. This is a very fine, fine, tiny work surface I'm using here. And like I said, no pressure, allow the abrasive to do the work. You're making contact all the way from the heel all the way to the tip. If you push too hard, if you change your angle, you can actually make your edge worse than it was to begin with. And the finer the stone, the more contact it's making, you're gonna hear a lot cleaner 
and more consistently, you're gonna hear any inconsistencies in your edge. Much easier on a finer stone because the knife is making more contact. And so you're gonna definitely hear any areas that need some work. And you can see this is cutting pretty quick. We've got a quick buildup of that black slurry on these stones. I love, this is my favorite thing to do. I've had some medical issues with my shoulder that have prevented me from doing a lot of sharpening. Sharpening a knife is one of my favorite things in the world to do. Even when I don't have to, I will be out here in my shop watching TV and just sharpening a knife. It is one of the most zen, relaxing things to do. And it's actually a very, very good skill to have. It comes in handy in a lot of situations besides just the kitchen. Having a good sharp knife is always a good thing. I love it when I have time to just come out here and my shoulder and arm allow me to. This is, this is, I know I sound like a weirdo. This is absolutely one of my favorite things in the world is sharpening knives. And, and it goes back to even making knives. It's one of those things where you can take an unyielding material and make it do what you want, not what it wants. It doesn't want to do what you want, but you're gonna make it. So that's my, my Bob Ross take on knife sharpening. So I'm doing a couple of really, really super light passes, almost like I'm, I'm actually taking weight off the knife. All I'm doing is a little bit of burr removal because we, for all intents and purposes, are done. Now, if I wanted to take this knife up a little further, I absolutely could. I could take this up to 1,100, 1,200, 4,000 grit, but I think on this knife, this is about where I want it. So the next step we're gonna do is I'm gonna dry my strop off real good because I got water on it. And I'm gonna just do a quick strop on this just to make sure I've removed any spots of the burr that I didn't with the burr removal passes. I'm gonna then take my thumbnail. I'm gonna run it down the edge like I said before. I'm gonna feel for any spots that are coarse. And there's a little spot right here. So we go back to our stone right here. And on recurves, that's not uncommon. It's like it's pretty easy to have an area here because of the way it transitions down the stone. So I'm gonna hit this area inside the recurve a couple times back and forth, and then I'll do some evening passes that are just gonna even those passes out so that there's no hiccup at the very end of my short little passes. I'm just gonna marry all of that together. And then same thing, a couple deburring passes on each side, side to side. Super, super, like just, if anything, just the weight of the blade. Don't allow your hand to have anything to do with it. And then that should, that was a rag I was using when I cut myself. I super glued it out here at the shop. So check that again. And yeah, we are good. We're gonna go ahead, hit the strop one more time. Like I said, the strop is loaded with like one micron uh, diamond emulsion, which is just diamond that is in uh, a liquid. And so it leaves a very, very, very fine film of abrasive on that. And then we can definitely do a paper cut test on this. Give me just a second, I'll get us a piece of paper. Uh, I'll get us a piece of newspaper over here. Actually, even better, I have a phone book. Is this a phone book? No, this is my voter's guide. Um, so this is a very good test to find out if your edge is nice and consistent. See how I don't hear any hiccups? It sounds even and consistent all the way through. If you're cutting through newsbook, or I mean uh, newspaper or phone book paper, and it sounds that smooth, then you've got a good, consistent, fine edge. I could take this up further. I could take it to a thousand grit. Now, I would like to point something out to you all. If you look on this, I did this intentionally. The bevel on this side is wider than on this side. I didn't mention this because it's not a step of the actual sharpening. This is something I'm doing because I'm going to let someone use this knife to do some testing. They were curious about it. They're gonna report back to me how it does and, uh, and stuff like that. But he is left-handed. And if you set a bias on a knife, which is it's almost chiseled, 
It's not quite chiseled, but it's almost. This angle comes over further, and this angle happens to be a little straighter. For him, for me, that's not going to cut the way I want. But for him, that's going to mean that that material is going to be flatter on this side, and it's going to cut more aggressively for him being left-handed. So I didn't mention it, but in case you happen to see that there's a wider bevel on this side than this side, that is just something that I've done knowing that who's going to be using this knife for the next few weeks. I absolutely can remove that bias when it comes back. Um, and we'll see if it comes back, depends. Like he does a lot of outdoor stuff and he's gonna report back to me. It could be that this knife never returns back, but I thought it would be cool because it is more of an outdoor style. It more, is more of an aggressive knife style and it comes with a sheath so he can throw it in a pack and he doesn't have to worry about using the box. So. So guys, like I said, not, I said it at the beginning, not an easy knife to sharpen for most people. I absolutely would recommend that you get one of the fixtured systems, like I mentioned, uh, a KME, um, a, an Edge Pro, uh, Wicked Edge isn't one of the ones I would recommend. A, a the I know that WorkSharp has one that use, you can use those exact stones. And using a, a, a fixtured system, you can set an angle. I personally don't like it, especially considering I was going to do two different angles on it. Like I said, I already knew that going into it, that that was my plan. So it, it would have been almost impossible for me to do that on that fixtured system. Can you? Yes. But difficulty levels absolutely can, can get to taking a lot more time than what it took there. So this is a great, great knife. Dahlstrong has been amazing as an affiliate and sponsor. They've done a lot for me. They've sent me so much stuff, the stones that I use, things like that. So if you could do me a favor, we're not going to get into a bunch of the other stuff that you can do to support the channel. But if you want to do me a favor, go check out Dahlstrong and uh, tell them I sent you. Use my affiliate link down below. And uh, we'll definitely, definitely uh, be looking at knives from Dahlstrong in the future. So guys... Thanks for hanging out. Thanks to Dahlstrong. Thanks to Abby for making this possible. And I'll see you guys later.